Hello everyone and welcome back guys to a brand new video where today we are here finally with F1 Manager 22. Yes, the second big game I have been super hyped for in 2022. Of course, we've jumped into F1 My Team Career Mode over on the Cody side of things. Now it's time for Frontier Developments to really try and showcase their work. Of course, a massive thank you to the team over at Frontier. Of course, I went up and played the game a couple of months ago. And then, of course, they've sent me out an early copy of the game to get some videos out for you guys as well. So, yeah, a big, big thank you to them. Of course, there are still a few things that are going to be tweaked and changed uh, before the game does get fully released on... Uh, sorry, tomorrow even. In fact, this is being recorded before the day one patch. So, yeah, really, really excited to be jumping into it, though. Nonetheless, of course, you guys know these sorts of series. I like to try and include as much detail as I possibly can, especially in the early stages of these sorts of series. But, of course, as always, you know, if you do want to just skip forward, there will be timestamps linked below. You know, if you just want to get into the racing action, things like that. At the time of recording this, I've genuinely got no idea how long this video is going to be. But like I said, I'm super excited uh, to be jumping into it. Of course, I put a poll up on Sunday, uh, if I remember correctly. And a massive thank you to all of you that voted. I think there was something ridiculous like over 10,000 of you uh, voted on that poll. And for the first season of F1 Manager 22... We're going to be rocking the red. Yes, we're going to be jumping in with Ferrari. I know some of you had some questions about it, you know, whether it'll just make it too easy, things like that. Personally, I think it's going to be quite a good thing. You know, it gives us a season or two just to sort of learn the game, learn what works, everything like that. Uh, hopefully, we won't absolutely wreck Ferrari more than they're wrecking themselves uh, in real life 2022. But I'll be doing a full-on road to glory, you know, with another team down the line. You know, whether that's Alfa Romeo, Mc Alfa Romeo McLaren... Anyone like that, I'm sure when we get back round to it, once we've won with Ferrari, we will, yes, yeah, certainly be jumping in with another team. So, of course, if you're new around here as well and you're not already, please do get yourself subscribed as well for daily F1 Manager content. I'm going to be trying to do daily videos on this and daily videos on F122 for as long as I possibly can. So, yeah, definitely want to get yourself subscribed. Trying to hit 100k by the end of the year. So, yeah, definitely please do consider clicking that subscribe button down below. But let's jump into it then. Formula One, a sport that spans hearts, minds, and nations, where the 20 best drivers in the world come together to take on some of the world's most historic circuits. And that legacy continues today. The 2021 championship was thrilling from start to finish, and 2022 is set to be even better. New regulations will usher in an age of pioneering changes, New driving talent alongside returning champions will be dueling it out to the bitter end. The pressure will be on the team principals in the upcoming season as they manage their drivers, their cars and the whole team to push to victory. This is not a challenge for the faint-hearted. This is Formula One. Well, what an intro that is then to F1 22. And since 2014, they've won the Constructors' Championships back-to-back -back every year. In 2021, they took home the Constructors' Championship once more, although they narrowly missed out on the Drivers' Championship coming in second. Heading into 2022, Mercedes will insist on dominating the competition. Nothing less than the fastest car and the most wins will give the Silver Arrows the outcome they want to see at the end of this new season and beyond. Well, there we go then. Crofty is just going to... I mean, I think we're in for a game of Crofty and other people uh, talking over us. Let's let's hear then what Ferrari, what Crofty's got to say about them. Ferrari have entered Formula One every year since the World Championship began back in 1950. They still hold the most championship titles of any team. The team had a solid season in 2021, securing third place in the Constructors' Championship. Ferrari are very much in it to win it. With strong leadership over the 2022 season and beyond, expect to see them fighting for those podium places. If all goes well, they'll be aiming for that top spot as the seasons progress. Well, there we go then. Nice little preview for Ferrari there. In terms of other things we should be interested in, of course, only got a four-star team rating, uh, but they are aiming to win the World Championship first year. And, of course, they are looking for the Constructors' Championship. We've got a high starting balance as well. 
Uh, car performance, first out of 10, that's reassuring. Driver performance, only third. I'm guessing behind, obviously, Red Bull and Mercedes. Their staff performance, again, that's quite interesting. They reckon they've got the best staff in Formula 1. And then headquarters quality. Maranello apparently isn't the best facility to have uh, in the world of F1, of course. We've got Charles Leclerc, Carlos Sainz. Not too sure how long I'll keep Antonio Giovinazzi. And then, obviously, Enrico Cardiel, uh, Diego Tondi, uh, Xavier Marcos Padros, and Ricardo Adami as the two race engineers. We're, we're gonna we're gonna admit it now. My Italian accent, I think, is probably on the same level uh, as Zach Brown's down at McLaren. Of course, yeah, Ferrari are such an iconic team in Formula One. You know, they've been there since the very beginning. I've done a couple of mini series uh, racing as actually Charles Leclerc himself uh, on previous F1 games, but this will be like the first big Ferrari series I think I've ever done on the channel as well there like we said you know hoping that we can try and bring them back to the top once more and finally the first time since 2008 bring them a title of course they won the constructors in 08 won the drivers in 07 let's hopefully change that around so it's 2022 they walk away with both cranes so four name then of course um we're just going to key in my normal sort of details. I apologise as well. I've actually bought myself a new microphone boom arm. So hopefully you don't hear my keyboard as loud as normal. Uh, we will keep the first time guidance on as well just in case. But yeah, I'm going to try and tweak a few things. You know, this is something very, very different to anything I've ever done before. Normally, of course, we, we sit over in the... I can't even point to it. We, we sit over in the sim rig normally. Uh, but yeah, of course, we're in a different part uh, for this career mode. But let's continue on then. So start a new game. These details cannot be edited later. I don't think I've spelt my name incorrectly. Ferrari it is. This is going to get exciting. Hi there. Nice to meet you. I'm Audrey Mensa, one of the team's senior engineers. Welcome to the team. It's great to have you on board. So there we go then. We have got Audrey, who is... I, I, I don't know if she's Italian as well. I'm just going to put an Italian accent over everything at the moment. But great Ferrari to have, have an on impressive board. history in F1, and we had a good finish last season. There's always room to improve, though, so it's a good job you're here. Now, let's show you around. I think this is quite important before we As our new team race, you're responsible for a lot of aspects of the team. Everything from managing our team's growth, overseeing our finances, and deciding on race day strategies will be in your hands. I've just seen we've got $30 million to start with. Oh, we are going to spend some money here at Ferrari. We're going to try and sort this absolute ragtag of a team out. You can keep an eye on most things from your dashboard here. I can take you through it now. First up, an overview of the board. They're the ones who set the expectations for the team. If they're confident in your leadership, you'll be fine. If they lose confidence in you, however, they might look to replace you. The board sets season objectives for the team to achieve. Reaching them will help keep confidence high, so be sure to familiarise yourself with what's expected. You'll want to keep an eye on the long-term objective for beyond this season as well. OK then, let's look ahead to the race weekend. We need to start preparing for the next Grand Prix, which will be the first of the season. As it's your first day though, there's nothing urgent for you to address. Feel free to explore more, or you can select continue and sign off for the day. Once you do, time will pass, but don't worry about missing anything. You'll automatically sign back in if an important event comes up. I mean, this is so, so important, of course. This is such a big learning curve for me. I have, I, you know, I've sort of played, you know, other management games in the past, but nothing to the sort of detail that we're going to see in F1 Manager 22. But I don't want to skip ahead just yet. We've just got an email there uh, from Audrey. We'll mark that as read. Um, but of course, we've got the this calendar, your calendar coming up month. as well. Pay I'm attention sure she's going to, to explain the more of that, that to me. We'll, we'll just skip through that uh, for now. Of course, we have got a few bits and pieces coming up. Sponsorship obligations, pre-season testing results, uh, aerodynamic testing. That finished yesterday. Uh, we've got more and more bits and pieces, of course, for, for Bahrain uh, in just over a week's time. One of Can my favourite places. Can we try and upgrade this the cars is where the before car we even get into the season? And where we develop and store our car parts. Throughout the season, you'll want to make sure the team are working on upgrading components and that both cars are being kept in good repair. You can also use car analysis to compare our car builds to other teams. Right, let's have a look then. Let's see how good the car is at the moment. Is it worth 
trying to upgrade a few bits and pieces it looks like so we're we're up in every single metric uh, in comparison to the average in F1 at 22 but I do certainly want to try and develop some new to parts to start a project now for the cars. you'll need to commit money and engineering time you'll be able to improve our car builds beyond their current performance so of course we have got the cost cap as well 112 million dollars I can be spent over the course of the year there are three different types of projects the engineering team can work on we can design a new car part for use this season manufacture copies of existing designs or undertake research and develop our expertise for next season. Right, so Are you sure you want to start a new project yet. now? I definitely want to start a new project. If there's one thing we've learned at Ferrari, it's that we constantly need, you know, Red Bull, I think, are going to be piling on the upgrades over the course of the year. So very, very interesting, of course, that we can try and research ready for next season. That won't happen until a few races into the year. I think that'll be around just before Imola. Um, but let's try and see if we okay. can design some new you parts. You want to get started with a design project. Now, generally These are car looking parts at we can it, design uh, and manufacture. Still you can also me. view our car parts. Um, but I Take think a look over the we are going to... So we're third top speed acceleration. We're very, very good through the corners. So I think what we probably want to do at the start of the year is see if we can try and develop some lower downforce sort of front and rear wings. Uh, in terms of the front team's wing expertise wing, then, in making new car can parts, can we try and develop something so that will help us make the car a bit quicker down the straights? Because that has really been Just make sure you know, the only the thing Ferrari has really struggled with. Of course, you can installed. swap parts backwards and forwards, so you know you can develop like a really high downforce wing. If you need testing to, is but also an important really, step you know, in designing it's Ferrari. Car. What are we trying to set ourselves up Our for Monza uh, later on in the year? So I think if we can try and, and develop a car that's very, very quick down the straight as well, uh, that will be super, super project. important. But let's wait and see then. If you assign some testing We've got, time there's to so much now, stuff, so much stuff to go through the at the start of the year. That's why I said time sampling down below, because there's going to be a lot of you that just want to get towards the racing. But I mean, it will be worth it when we do obviously get everything sorted like this. So we're going to be even better through the corners. Um, let's try. Can, can we focus on high speed? Oh, there we go. If we do that, that's going to make us again even better uh, through the corners. Of course, we haven't got limited wind tunnel hours as well over the season. But I think if we certainly focus on those, that's going to make the car, like we said, obviously a whole lot better. That should take a little bit of time. You can direct the engineering. Oh, here we go. This is what I actually want. Because I knew there was an option here somewhere for it. F1 car parts. Let's are try and focus on medium Over and the high season, speed. We'll... I think is going to be the really important bit. Can I go like that? We, I mean, like I said, we've got very, very good parts on the car elsewhere. But if we can try and develop it so it's very focused on the high speed stuff, that'll be super important. I mean, can we just drag everything up? We, we can make everything maxed out. I'm not sure whether that's then going to take a lot of time or what. Um, but we're, we're going to focus on everything a lot, I suppose. Um, if it works, I, this is what I said, you know, about the first season on this game. We're going to try and test out some things, everything like that. But I think, yeah, we're going to we're going to try with that As a final first step of all, the team gets um, bear in mind... Gonna, these well, I don't think we need to rush it desperately. Um, but... I mean, yeah, we definitely want to. We definitely want to put a few engineers on it. Of course, we've got ten within the team, so we'll set three up then on this first project there, and that's going to immediately uh, be a million dollars. Uh, I mean, a million dollars is a ridiculous amount of money, but for a team like Ferrari, that is pocket change. Nice one. At the Continue. end of the day, I think I'm just going to go around tweak a few other bits, and then we'll get prepared, ready for Bahrain. So yeah, we have got. I can just see now. We've only got. 2.3 of the 4.8 days left on the MAU hours and then on the wind tunnel we've got 44 left of 64 so we are going to try and put a new underfloor on the car as well like I said that's going to really really help us and you can see there immediately acceleration will go up to first we won't quite get top speed I don't think but it is going to bring us a whole lot closer so if I focus on higher speed that's going to be really really important there drag reduction oh there we go that's what we want that's going to make us the best car across the board in Formula 1. Are we going to make Ferrari OP uh, before we've even jumped into the first race of the year? I'm going to dedicate a couple of engineers to that one as well. That's going to be another million straight into the pocket. So we've got no more design or research slots available 
at the moment. We are going to have to try and manufacture more parts on the car at some point quite soon. Uh, we can already see, you know, we have, we've got a few spare just in case, but of course that's going to be really critical. You know, if, you know, Charles Leclerc, if he bins it like he did in real life at France, that is then going to mean that we're going to have to try and focus more and more time and effort on trying to rebuild more and more parts there. So it's going to be 67 days and 81 days, though, uh, before those front wing and the underfloor are done. So it is going to mean, you know, as we get in towards the European leg of the year, we are hopefully, therefore, going to have a bit of a better car. Um, but I think, to be honest... This is where you'll around, find relevant information on the team. I'm tempted to get rid of Giovinazzi at some point, but I don't think we'll worry about that all too much at the moment. It's uh, not just the fastest staff, car that makes though, the team the best in F1. I mean, I don't think... It's the people think, you know, doing this. This is, again, the thing, obviously. We're, we're at Ferrari. To begin with, I don't think we really need to try and change too much. Although, saying that, and our technical chief isn't particularly great. He's only 81 rated. Is it worth trying to find a new technical chief elsewhere? Could we try and bring someone... Actually, I mean, he's 81 rated. Is he the highest still in the sport? Uh, so the only one that's better then uh, is Pierre Wash. I probably, I'm so sorry, I'm going to butcher names horrendously uh, in this. So yeah, Enrico is still second best overall. We could try and get uh, Simone Resta uh, back in. Of course, he went to Haas a couple of years ago, but yeah, we're we're looking we're looking pretty peachy on that front as well there. And like I said, you know, the other two are really really highly rated as well. I do want to see quickly uh, just how highly rated Adrian Newey is. Surely got to be a hundred. Surely, Adrian Newey is going to be 100 elsewhere there. I don't know. Is he, where, where is Adrian Newey? Speaking of him. Surely. Surely he's on here somewhere. Can I, can I search for him? Surely. Adrian Newey is going to be right at the top. Where, where am I going? Um, scouting team. I mean, we could try and scout other people, but I'm not going to worry about that too much. Um, in terms From though, here, of anything you can see all else, the team's facilities. We've from got the all the team facilities, everything like that. Is it worth trying to upgrade centers. for our facilities? You can we build new facilities. The best on the grid. I reckon we do. I reckon we. I reckon Over we put time. money into the ground immediately. Uh, we are going to try and upgrade the facilities. Um, the CFD simulator is only one star at the moment. So ten million dollars. We're going to burn Ferrari's money like there's no tomorrow. But that is going to make a big, big difference uh, later on down the line there. But yeah, there we go. We've got 16 million left in the bank. We've spent a fair bit of money uh, before we jump into the first race of the year. But let's start forwarding ahead then. It's uh, no longer your first day. We'll else. have you on top of things in no time. You'll continue moving through days this way until it's time for the race, which you can see in the upcoming events list. Right, there we go. Um, it's so good to get in the habit of as well that we need to go through. I apologise as well, of course. I'm to trying to take all this information in you have an uh, at the same time. Um, but we've got a few little bits and pieces then. So just everyone being introduced, sponsorship obligations. Um, obviously that is, let's go to the sponsor obligations, see what they're after. So race hospitality, uh, car manufacturing is paused for the day of the event or, um, yeah, I suppose that's fine. We'll go, we'll do a factory event, I suppose. Can we do that? What, what are they after? Um, I, I don't know what they want really, so we'll, we'll sponsor an event. I probably should have listened to what she was telling me there, but we'll, we'll do that, I suppose, as well. That's absolutely fine. Here you can delve deeper into team finances okay, here and we see go. our Finance balance, as well, this as, is well as understanding bit. information on income and rewards. Got to try and keep and the sponsors the happy. We need the money to flow, to but Ferrari by. do sell enough road cars as well, uh, so I think we, we should be good enough on that one. So you can see at the moment we're actually under budget at this stage of the year, but I think we're gonna have to try and go for a big development push a little bit further down the line. Uh, any Looks more like emails, so we've got a, a kickoff party request. to celebrate. So we are, yeah, we'll do that. We'll let the team enjoy themselves while well, they're only $10,000 for a party. And it'll I reckon that's a good morale. decision. Uh, it team's be... in high spirits, that's now the that's most important with. thing. We can focus Let's on... get in towards the first race of the year then. Bahrain, There's always some let's jump out to into practice then. First race of the year. Uh, we've got more and more parts on the car. That's good. We've done everything we need to there. Um, I think we've also okay. got Bahrain you... race prep. So everything we need to know. Just a few details as well, of course. 5.4 kilometers meant to be clear skies as well. Let's get into race preparation then. This is your race from preparation Sakia. area, where you'll get the team ready for the upcoming race weekend. You can also find all the information you need on the circuit we're racing on here. 
So again, this is something that you know I touched upon when I did a preview video each race of F1 Manager as well. The amount of detail there is everywhere These help on this game, you really do get to know everything for the team. Uh, that is going on. But yeah, I think in terms of performance targets, Here we've though, got the performance obviously we can try and set up extra targets uh, that the team, oh sorry, obviously the sponsors Looks like want we've us got to incentives. do. You can also decide um, I reckon to, okay. we can certainly try and guarantee ourselves a front row lock. Uh, we, we that can reach feels Q3, like something definitely. we can achieve without too much difficulty. The reward if we meet the guarantee is good. Well, there we and go. The we'll get 80 grand if we make it. And if somehow okay, I don't get these here. cars into Q3, Let's head back. Uh, we only lose 20 grand anyway. Um, anything else, though? Race target, I think. Finish position, yeah, we can definitely get P2 uh, at the end of the day. Obviously, we can't really. I don't think we can put hot streak on it yet. So we, if they want us to get both drivers in the top four, I certainly think that's going to be doable as well there so a lot of potential losses on that one but a lot of potential money uh, in the bank as well um, you've done everything needed I think, yeah, we're all and good to go then bahrain first race of f1 manager i'm so excited to be jumping into this i mean the graphics as well are looking so good now um but i mean yeah let's let's head trackside then i'm going to try and not do too much sort of video welcome to the archipelago of formula one bahrain might have a small land footprint but it's showing its big spirit right now in the grandstands Either way, it's time for another fantastic weekend of Grand Prix racing. The Bahrain International Circuit is a challenging track and the cars routinely have to brake from high gear to low to take the narrow turns. With the need for downhill braking, the risk of locking up is one drivers will need to manage. It's all about focus and balance to get victory here. At this early stage in the season, there are still plenty of opportunities for things to change. In this sport, there simply are no guarantees. Stay right here, because we're just getting started. Great to see you again. Welcome to your first race weekend with the team. It's Friday, so we're kicking off with free practice one as usual. Well, there we go then. Just a quick explainer for those of you that are new. Obviously, you've got practice, qualifying, and then the race come Sunday. Um, I, I, you know, I love those little intros that you get from Crofty as well. Though. But we'll try and put a lot of info into practice today. Of course, like I said, I won't show you guys everything uh, that we're trying to do as well. You know, Otherwise, this video is going to be about four hours long. Um, but yeah, I'm going to try and send out both cars nice and early on in free practice one. We'll try and get some mileage in, everything like that. And we'll wait and see what we can muster and up. Here's our race preparation area. This is where you can make any changes you need ahead of the upcoming practice session. Well, there we go. Then that's good. So we can try and tell the team what they want to do. When you're ready, we can continue to the practice session. So again, I think, you know, first race of the year, everything like that. The big focus in FP1 and FP2 is just going to be about trying to get laps on the board. Obviously, FP3 will try and do some one-shot runs, everything like that. Um, but, I mean, obviously, you know, Friday, you're trying to just make sure the drivers are confident in the car as well. So I think, yeah, what we'll do is we'll send them both out and sort of see what they can do. I think I've got Charles Leclerc all set up. We're just going to set him out for a 15, uh, sorry, 14 lap run in the car. They're on a medium set of tyres. They we're going to try and run slightly lower downforce uh, than the game was originally anticipating there. But it should mean, you know, we're still looking pretty good within the setup confidence window. Um, but yeah, I think we're ready then to try and send Charles Leclerc out for his first run. Um, yeah, I think think Leclerc. Leclerc is all ready to go. Sites as well then. I'm going to probably try and go with a similar model. Uh, but we might just try... We'll, we'll try go even more aggressive on the wings there with Carlos Sainz and sort of see what he can muster up. Right, okay then. So they're telling me we should probably let the team handle all the practice sessions to begin with. I mean, it's probably something we'll do a lot more uh, later on down the line. But I, I didn't really want to simulate to qualifying, if I'm honest. But I guess the team, I guess the game's telling me I have to. This channel is proudly sponsored by Bybit, the official crypto partner of Red Bull's Formula One team. I've been using their platform for my personal crypto savings over the last few months, and when they got in touch to support the channel, I was super, super excited. Currently, they're offering you guys a special new promo for the first 100 of you to deposit $10 or more onto the platform. You'll get another $10 free. Also, five lucky winners will get their initial deposit doubled up to $1,000. That means if you deposited $1,000 onto the platform using my codes below, you could be within a chance to get another $1,000 
thousand completely free. We've seen the landscape around crypto drastically change over the last couple of years, and I genuinely believe it holds an important place in our future. However, please be careful as always when trading, as you are liable uh, to lose money. But if you're interested and you're 18 or older, click the link down below to get started and see why Red Bull and myself, as well as thousands of others, trust Bybit as their crypto. With FP3 all finished, it's time to move on to qualifying. Drivers will no doubt be constantly pushing to secure a good starting place in tomorrow's race. Of course, all it takes is one momentary lapse of concentration and they can find themselves at the back of tomorrow's grid. There are always risks to be taken, but can they afford not to? There's not much left to say, so let's get into it. Right, so having a look then at the free practice results, it was for Stappen fastest, but we weren't far away. Char uh, sorry, Carlos Sainz actually P2, half a tenth ahead of Charles Leclerc, but three tenths away from the Red Bulls. We've often found that Ferrari, though, has got a very, very quick car on a Saturday. No major surprises looking up and down the order. Pierre Gasly actually going very, very fast uh, in the Alfa there. Bottas up in P5, only a second away from the fastest quali uh, sorry practice run, um, but... Oh, there we go. The team had them work on three goals during practice. Track acclimatization, car parts knowledge, and setup confidence. Right, so that's quite interesting. You might get an even better performance from the drivers for the rest of the weekend. So neither of the drivers feeling 100% confident in the car then. Um, but I guess, you know, the team have sort of set them up as best as they can, of course. They'll still build confidence uh, as qualifying goes on. I think it's just ready then to jump out towards qualifying. And these results, obviously, as we know, will determine the grid ready for tomorrow. Let's wait and see then. Can we watch them go out on runs? Obviously, this is Q1 preparation, of course. We should only uh, need the one run each. Um, so they both seem pretty happy with that. Um, can I? They're 67% confident. They're running very high front wing angle in comparison to rear wing. Um, but revert to the highest confidence setup. Um, confirm. Oh, it's exactly the same. Right, we'll, we'll let them both go out on their runs then and see where Leclerc and Sainz can place the cars. I love all the real life radios. But here we go then. Charles Leclerc, for the first time on F1 Manager, is going to be heading out for the first lap here in Q1. You know, with a bit of luck... Uh, we'll just sort of see the drivers go straight through. You know, only, it should only take the one lap uh, to see both cars into Q2. Um, but you never quite know what's going to happen in the world of Formula 1. I think what we'll do is we'll fast forward out. We'll watch him get to his run. Um, we Obviously, we already know about the onboard cameras, everything like that, of course, when I played the game. Um, but I want to ride on board then with Charles Leclerc when he does get into it. Stroll's locked up. Sorry, I paused it rather than just going back to normal speed. But let's ride on board then with Charles Leclerc for our first lap of F1 Manager here on F1. Well, yeah, F1 Manager 22. We're going to wait a little bit before we send signs out for his first run. Then just make sure Leclerc gets a good lap in there. He tips it in nicely uh, through turn one, of course. It's a bit weird sat here watching a Formula 1 car go around without commentating it. Uh, I'll be honest, but we'll try and we'll try and add a little bit of commentary uh, to it as best as possible. There is breaking down in towards turn five. There, Charles Leclerc, incredibly aggressive uh, with the turning on the front end. You know, he's clearly got a lot of confidence to really sort of try and shut the car. In. He's trying to late apex it quite a lot as well there. Uh, so very very interesting driving style from our young driver there. But of course, yeah, the absolute. Uh, number one, of course, at Ferrari. Sainz did beat him, of course, at the end of 2021. But Charles Leclerc, I think, is still, you know, Ferrari's golden boy for the future, of course. Uh, at the time, at the time. Um, just got to look after the tyres, though, according to Marcos, as we head down in towards the end of Sector 2. I think the first sector was pretty good going. I don't know if we can get any sort of more data about it. And one of the Alpines has held us up. Love that on the first run of the year. They're really not great observations because I don't know if that was... No, it must have been Esteban Ocon uh, who got in the way there. So I'm not happy uh, with that one. But you can just see Aston Martins, Williams as well getting in the way there. As I think it's either Alvin or Latifi trying to just stay out of the way and hopefully give us a bit of slipstream up towards the final corner. But then down towards start-finish line, it is going to be a 131.7 from Charles Leclerc. That hopefully will be good enough to see him into Q2. Um, but now, obviously, we'll have to let Sainz go out and see 
you know, whether how much time our teammate, uh, sorry, his teammate, even I should say, lost in his first run. Right, then. right so we've currently got Charles Leclerc back into the pit lane then. You can see he's eight tenths away uh, from, ha uh, sorry, Max Verstappen there, who I goes fastest. Using these tires. Why? Best using a fresh soft set for the current conditions. Oh, they're still but going on about Charles. I'm going to try and get him out on the right tires in a minute. I want to watch Sainz go for a lap. Please, first of all, just let Carlos Sainz try and go for the run there. Again, he's been held up uh, by one of the Aston Martins out of the final corner. So I'm not going to hold too much confidence that this lap is going to be particularly special either. Everyone apparently hates Ferrari at the start of this season. But fingers crossed. Uh, Sainz can try and at least get close to the lap time the close out. I'm just a bit worried you know, the likes of Gasly, Ocon uh, and Sonoda are going to be a bit too close that when it gets to the second runs uh, that we might need to go for one as well. There is what is the time going to be through sector one. Bad uh, by Carlos Sainz but still, still not quite where I'd want him to be. Here we go then. Carlos Sainz heading down in towards the final corner of his first qualifying run here. Can he try and put the power down nice and tidily as we head out of the final turn 31.7 the benchmark from Charles Leclerc Carlos Sainz does improve does go quicker there on a 131.3 he should be safe that should be Sainz locked into Q2 uh, but like I said I might just have to send Leclerc out right towards the end of the session once more well here we are then Charles Leclerc once more he's still currently sat in P6 then at this moment in time but every car currently out on circuit apart from Carlos Sainz I think he's safely going to make it through into Q2 but I just want to sort of see what pace Leclerc uh, can get out of the car as he rockets down towards Term 1 there way over 310 kilometers an hour by the time he stamps on the brakes in towards Term 1 and I must admit the graphics do look very very cool on F1 manager as he heads back up the hill in towards turn four here again 304 kilometers an hour this ferrari car still very very quick there of course we saw just how low the front wing velocity they're running in this session there as you can see tips it in through the chicane they're very very fast chicane fifth sixth gear through there and then of course you try and get the car slowed down in towards the hairpin can be quite difficult to get the traction out actually of that corner but charles Leclerc, of course an experienced wheelman gets the car nicely settled there. You can just see through the next couple of corners, of course, again, super easy uh, to lock up as you head down the hill in towards turn 10. But the team a little bit worried about the tyres at the moment. Charles Leclerc will get a chance to cool them down a bit heading down this next straight, but just got to try and hope he can hang on through the final sector of the lap. Not too sure if he's improving at the moment. As you can see George Russell actually in the drop zone for Mercedes there, 2.6 seconds off the pace, just ahead, a tenth ahead of Lance Stroll, but I mean, we've got one of the Red Bull cars just in front of us. Verstappen still fast as they're ahead of Sergio Perez, quarter of a second away, but down in towards the final corner. Leclerc couldn't improve in Sector 1, has improved in Sector 2 though, so fingers crossed this will see him rocket his way up to at least towards Sainz's time, up to the line, and he does go into P2. They're a tenth of a second away from Max Verstappen at the end of Q1, so that's both cars comfortably through. George Russell as well improves up into P7. But that's a very, very good time set by Charles Leclerc. I think it's going to be on uh, when we get towards Q3. Though. I think we've got a little bit more in the back pocket. Charles Leclerc knows that as well. But Q1 successfully navigated for the first time on F1 Manager. Things we love to see. Well, there we go then. You can just see Carlos Sainz and Charles Leclerc. They're right close uh, to the Red Bulls and Max Verstappen and Sergio Perez but yeah jumping into Q2 then again gonna try and see if we can just get them both through on one run we're trying to save tires are uh, ready for Q3 I'm also gonna try setting them out on a scrub set so fingers crossed we'll be able to find a little bit more pace right so into Q2 then just letting Sainz know of course he can push on this first run 10 minutes left on the clock at the moment Gasly and Norris are the only two cars to have set times but I think we're gonna see a few more cars peeling out of the pit lane which isn't really what we want at the moment as we try and head down towards turn one fingers crossed that alpine stays out of the way what are you doing move who's that fernando alonso or esteban ocon there i don't quite know off the top of my head it must be fernando alonso ocon uh, is still what's that hamilton is just completely brain checked so we may as well bail out like, that lap immediately um, that lap's over for poor Carlos Sainz. Um, yeah, that's that's so annoying. That is so annoying. Um, I think I'd accidentally just put him on a pretty lean run anyway. Um, so we'll we'll just get him to harvest. But can I tell him just to abandon this lap? 
Um, I think, I think, yeah, we'll we'll call the car back in because that lap is pretty much ruined immediately. We'll also send uh, Charles Leclerc out then. Hopefully, he can find some track space. Charles Leclerc, sorry, Carlos Sainz, even his lap time, nine and a half seconds off the pace. Probably isn't exactly uh, where we want to be in Q2, but fingers crossed Leclerc then can try and find a little bit more for the team. Verstappen again, though, has immediately slotted himself into the 130.8, so I think we could see, you know, close to a 30.5 uh, when we get into the Q3 runs. But like I said, Leclerc on a scrub set of tyres as well, so I'm intrigued to see just how far away he'll be. But again, Bottas, P2 currently in his Alfa Romeo. That is absolutely insane uh, from Valtteri Bottas here as we ride up the hill in towards Sector 3. Though Charles Leclerc coming towards the end of what seems like quite a good lap there. He has got quite a bit of good track space as we still can't send Sykes back out uh, just at the moment. This is the problem. I want to sort of focus on what one driver is doing. But of course, being the team manager, you've kind of just got to focus on the bigger picture as well there. But down in towards the final corner then of the second run in qualifying here. Of course, Charles Leclerc out of the final turn. Down towards the line. Will it be into the 1 minute 30s? It's going to be... A 1 minute 30.8. Three hundredths away from Max Verstappen. The fight is on. Right, well, three minutes left then on the clock. I'm kind of hoping now we can just get Sainz out before everyone else does their last runs. Because, of course, at the moment he is P15 and last uh, in the drop zone. But I think, yeah, he should be comfortably out ahead there. Here we go, one of the Haas cars heading down out of the pit lane. Of course, you'd hope the Haas and the Alfa Romeos uh, get out of the way a little bit more. But you never quite know. Oh, what's going to happen on F1 Manager. Of course, we have got some cool different camera angles as well. I might just sit here and, you know, sit on Carlos Sainz's shoulder as he goes out for his run, his second run even, in Q2. But fingers crossed, therefore, this one should be enough to see him into Q3 nice and tidy. Luckily as well, of course, F122 in real life, you get a free set of tyres at the start of the race because I had completely forgot Sainz is actually doing his second run here on the same scrub set that he used in his first Q2 run that he'd already used in Q1. I've tried to make sure that both drivers have got a clean set ready for Q3. But at the final corner, up towards the line, Carlos Sainz is going to set a 131.0 there, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, yeah, 131.1, I think, was the time at the end there. But, I mean, yeah, look at that. Four cars, quarter of a second. Ferrari versus Red Bull is well and truly on. But that should be both cars nicely into Q3. Let's get into it. Let's have a look. Now, look What's Ricardo this. doing down towards Ricardo. Turn 1 there? Oh, big, big lockup from Ricardo off to the Shadow Realm down at Turn 1 there. He's completely disappeared out of shot. And that, I think, has ruined his teammate Lando Norris's laps. But yeah, Sainz peeling back into the pit lane, though. That is session done and dusted. Both McLarens out. Okay. Fernando Alonso P11 there. Sonoda. Sorry, you know, Magnussen suddenly up into P11. So Alonso, Norris, Ricardo all probably very, very gutted uh, with that result. But we've done everything we need to. Like I said, let's get into Q3. Right, so final runs then as we get ready for Q3. Just going to make sure. Of course, we have actually got now two fresh sets of tyres uh, for both drivers here. Don't think we don't need to change any of the wings or anything like that. So we're going to try and both zone them out. Obviously, we've got the chance to go out uh, for a two fast laps here. Of course, I think Red Bull have used one extra set of tyres over us earlier on in the session. But we'll send Leclerc out. Uh, we'll give him a quick second, and then we will send uh, Carlos Sainz out on to the circuit as well there. But, yeah, things looking very, very exciting then. Ready for Q3 here in Bahrain. Leclerc is going to be the first man out onto the circuit. Um, but that should be good enough as well, obviously, to send Charles Leclerc, uh, sorry, Carlos Sainz out as well. I'm excited. Q3 here for the first time on F1 Manager. Fingers crossed we can try and get one of these Scarlet Ferraris on the pole. So Charles Leclerc then is going to be the first man to set the benchmark here in Q3. Uh, well, I think we saw, yeah, fast times, like I said, of 130.8 in Q2 there. We haven't really sort of seen much track evolution as qualifying has gone on there. But I think it's just obviously as the track gets slightly cooler in the evening here. Of course, the sun has now well and truly set in the Sakia Desert. Hopefully, hopefully Charles Leclerc can make the difference here as he tips it in again. At the top of the hill at turn four. It's, that was again, it was, it, it's a little bit, a little bit off uh, the way the AI sometimes try and tack some of the corners. But of course, you know, that's not what this game uh, is quite about there. But I mean, really, if we can get both cars ahead of Perez, that'll probably be quite good as well. You know, should open up a bit of extra strategy uh, in the races. Come on, Alfa Romeo. Don't do it. Just don't do time. it. Please move. Oh, this is okay. so annoying. Show Guan Yu, I think that is. What are you doing? Breathe back. Breathe. 
breathe. It's, I mean, it is just a very, very strange, sort of annoying thing, but we may as well box Leclerc. Oh, no, we'll let him finish the run anyway. We haven't got enough time to try and do three runs here. Uh, but we'll certainly go right on board with Carlos Sainz. Just don't say the other Alfa Romeo is going to block him as well. Please, please just get out of the way. Surely you can spot a Ferrari like this. There we go. Uh, Alfa Romeo does jump out of the way. They're Bottas uh, with some good spatial awareness. But I think Charles Leclerc is still going to be the first man to put a time on the board. I think we've got both Red Bulls uh, just a little way in front as we head up in towards the final sector here. Charles Leclerc up across the lining board. He is going to do a 132-1. So, yeah, certainly a long way away uh, from where we were hoping for for uh, Charles Leclerc. But Carlos Sainz down it towards the final corner. He might be getting a little bit of a toe there, as I think that is one of the Red Bulls getting held up behind one of the slower cars there. Yeah, Sainz taking a lot of curb out of the final corner. But up towards the line, what's the time going to be for Carlos Sainz? He goes fast. It's a 130.7. So immediately, Sainz finding a little bit more. That's what we want to see there. Just pushing the envelope as now the pressure is on Max Verstappen as well, who clearly got held up behind Pierre Gasly. Right, here we go then. Crunch time, end of Q3 here in Bahrain. Currently, Carlos Sainz is fastest there. Sergio Perez in P2. So it has been the number two drivers that are at the front at the moment. But if Charles Leclerc can suddenly try and pull out a lap time here. Verstappen's still in P3 at the moment, so he's not as far away as I originally thought he might be there. I thought he might have got jumped by both of the Mercs. But yeah, we need a good lap from Charles Leclerc here. Right in the dying stages of the section, I'm certainly going to be riding on board with the young Monogast driver as he gets ready to hopefully put it on pole. But at the very least, please join Sainz on the front row. These are tense, tense moments then as everyone rounds down in towards the final corner to start their final lap of qualifying here. We've got Sergio Perez, who's a little way up the road but luckily we're quite towards the front of the queue there in case there are any mistakes from the cars behind of course Sainz not far behind either so it is going to be interesting to see what he can do as we rock it down towards someone there 200 miles an hour 325 clicks for Charles Leclerc in towards that first braking zone there and you can just see in the back of the shot we'll try and keep an eye on what Carlos Sainz could do as well there is up the hill he goes for the final time on Saturday night here in Bahrain, Charles Leclerc, please, please, I'm hoping, I'm praying for the Monegasque boy, you know, we are the new Matia Bonotto, I should have got myself some glasses uh, for this one as well, but if Charles Leclerc can get this thing at least back onto the front row, you know, if we could start the year with a bang, that would be absolutely perfect there, as he's pretty tidy navigating his way through the hairpin, he's not up, and neither of them are up actually, uh, in sector one, but hopefully, you know, as the lap unfolds there, you know, we should see a big improvement from Charles Leclerc uh, in Sector 2 there. And, I mean, if Sainz can do the same, that'll be super important there. As both drivers still moaning a little bit about tyre temperatures here in qualifying. You know, they do definitely seem to be taking a lot out of them in the first half of the lap. Of course, you have got three straights in the second half of the lap, though, so it should give them a chance to cool the rubber down. But Sainz... Uh, there we go, Leclerc Purple! The Club Purple in Sector 2. What will Sainz do? He's not improving. It is all down to Charles Leclerc as we head in towards the final corner of qualifying. Here for the Bahrain Grand Prix. Will Charles Leclerc be able to make the difference and put it on pole? Here in Sakia, Bahrain rounding the final corner. Nice amount of curb on the exit. Up towards the line. Where is Charles Leclerc going to go? It's going to be... I think that's pole at 130.6. Leclerc's done it. Where is Max Verstappen, though? As we head down in towards the final corner, the Dutchman is surely the only person that's going to be able to put a stop to the Ferrari front row lockout at the moment. Up towards the line, what is Verstappen going to do? It's P2, he splits us right at the front there, but it is pole position for Charles Leclerc in qualifying for the Bahrain Grand Prix. That we love to see. Perfect start to the year. I mean, I'm happy that we're fighting right at the front at the start of F1 Manager. That is awesome. Awesome. Such an adrenaline rush as well there. Charles Leclerc fastest in the end. Neither driver actually improving over their Q2 times. There we see a 130.6 for Charles Leclerc and Max Verstappen. Sainz and Perez just a couple of tenths away there. And then a big, big drop back down to Mercedes. Hamilton fifth there ahead of his... Uh, no, sorry, Valtteri Bottas even in sixth there. George Russell only able to go P7 in the end ahead of Gasly Alonso and Zhou Guan Yu. But I think it's time then. Bahrain Grand Prix, 57 laps ahead of us. Let's get into it then here in Sakia. Tension continues to build here as race day begins. Ferrari performed brilliantly during qualifying and will be very pleased with their grid positions. But the challenge for them will be to keep the momentum going during the race. This weekend, Red Bull displayed promise during qualifying. 
Now they need to capitalize on their grid position and get a good race under their belts. And clouds are stretching across the sky tonight, which means that teams and drivers alike will be nervously watching the weather radar. But which team has perfected the strategy that will see them prevail today? Here at the Bahrain Grand Prix. Right then, time for the main event, the Bahrain Grand Prix. This is a great time for us to get some early points under our belt. So let's stay focused and push hard. Right, let's see what we can do then. Bahrain Grand Prix today, of course, we've got to try and make sure uh, we've got a good strategy on the board as well there. But qualifying, we've already got that target done and dusted. Fingers crossed we can get the race results as well that the team are after but in terms of strategy then i think it's going to be medium hard uh, for both drivers of course we don't really want to start on them on the hards and just watch them go backwards early on because if they end up you know behind even like a mercedes or something like that it could really cost us later on in the afternoon right let's sort out the strategy then for both cars uh so we are going to try and do like i said we're going to try and do medium onto softs i don't really like i said i don't think a two stop is going to be worth it here they think something there is worth doing um oh, i've just got to click that one haven't i um, a is a fast but risky option. Yeah, there we go. That's a very, very aggressive two stop. Then we've got a little bit of a safer one and then a very, very conservative one Strategy at the bottom. Um, but again, that's not that's not where I really want to go with this. You know, we want to try and do what about lap 23, 24 there or thereabouts, I think is probably worth it. Uh, don't want to try and push too hard as well. So that reckons it 37 seconds, it reckons, we shave off uh, by doing that. So we're certainly going to try and go uh, with strategy D on Charles Leclerc. Um, let's just try and make sure we do the same then for Carlos Sainz. Or is it worth trying to put him on something a little bit different? I think no. We'll, we'll try and just keep it pretty similar then. Again, we'll try and take him one extra lap though. Lap 24 for Carlos Sainz there. That is going to be the goal today. I think we are basically ready then. For this car, I didn't select it, did I? Uh, we need. To... Oh, I got completely rid of it. No, Carlos Sainz. I don't want to screw you like this before the season even begins. We'll create strategy. We'll actually make sure we select it that time. And there we go. We are good, ready to start the Bahrain Grand Prix. Then I hope we can just keep it clean and tidy at the start. You know, not worry too much. And then we'll try and focus on managing the battery packs as well. There, of course, that's going to be really, really critical here. We've only got 56 laps worth of fuel, but that is the maximum we can put in the car. So we are actually going to have to save fuel as the race goes on as well. But we'll focus on that a bit later on in the afternoon. Let's get into it then. Bahrain Grand Prix, first race on F1 Manager. I am so, so hyped. Cloudy skies tonight with the drivers now having taken position on the grid. And there is Charles Leclerc. He won today. Let's see if they can take advantage of that position. And further back, there's Sainz. They're up in third position, tantalizingly close to pole. The teams are ready to go. Here we go with the Bahrain Grand Prix. Ready on the grid then, Bahrain Grand Prix, five red lights. And it's lights out, and away we go. Croft is nicked to be start procedure there, but it looks like Verstappen has rocketed away as we head down towards turn one. Interestingly enough, though, he's on a set of soft compound tyres, so Verstappen is probably going to take the lead at the start of the Grand Prix there, but that's okay. I'm not going to worry about that if he's starting on those soft tyres there. It's only us on the mediums. Why is no one else opted to start this race on medium tyres there? I think we'll just get sights to not try to apply too much pressure to Charles Leclerc early on there, but, I mean, if these guys can try and stick in the DRS range of Max Verstappen. You can see everyone else super aggressive on their medium... Uh, sorry, on their soft compound tyres at the start there. I think everyone inside the top 10 has actually started maybe on the old set of tyres they used at the end of qualifying. But, of course, yeah, we are going to have to save fuel as well, uh, like I said, in this race. But 57 laps ahead of us. We're right on board uh, with the first lap here in Sakir, of course, before we start sort of just watching how the race pans out and just trying to make sure we focus on our own race strategy but really really good to see you know despite the fact Verstappen got the jump on us off the start line there the fact we're able to stick quite close to him as we head oh I've 
accidentally paused it there. At least we know that one uh, does that now. But can I... I don't think I can get rid of all the HUD. It would be quite nice uh, just to watch it with a bit of a cinematic as well there. But yeah, really, really good to see. You know, Charles Leclerc hasn't dropped back away from Verstappen. You know, you kind of expect if he's on the alternate strategy that he's going to try and romp away at the start here. But Leclerc not pushing hard and still just sticking right behind the back of Max Verstappen there as we head down in towards the final corners of lap one. Have we seen anyone? We can't really see who's gained, who's lost anything at the start of the race there. But Sainz still P3 ahead of Perez. Bottas up into fifth place there as here goes Charles Leclerc back down towards turn one. Is he going to be able to make a move work on Max Verstappen? I think he's just going to try and apply some pressure. Is he going to send it? No. Charles Leclerc thinks better of it there as we get back down into the first braking zone. But yeah, top four all still pretty much as they were. Like we said, Verstappen took the lead off the start level. Once we get the DRS, surely Charles Leclerc, if he's able to maintain this pace early on, he's going to be able to apply some pressure there. I'm watching Sainz just behind. He's still got Sergio Perez right behind him, but this is an incredibly strong start there. Team now, of course, just explaining to us how we need to focus on making sure that everything is all good. Um, we sort of already know all about that, but perfect start then here in Bahrain for this race. I think it is just going to be a case of can Sainz keep up with Leclerc and can they both keep, you know, can Sainz keep Perros behind? Can Leclerc keep Perro, uh, sorry, keep Verstappen in his sights at the front? At the moment, we are the fastest car on track. I miss Leclerc overtaking Verstappen! <laughs> I don't know how I missed it. Oh, no. <laughs> First overtake of the year there is now Perez. Uh, he's trying to have a go on Carlos Sainz there. But I just completely missed Charles Leclerc getting the jump on Max. I thought he'd do it down in towards turn one there. But he actually got it done down in towards the final corner. As you can just see Charles Leclerc under big, big pressure from Max Verstappen still at the front of the field. But I cannot believe I missed that early on here. As you can see, Leclerc... I mean, they're all just nose to tail at the front of this field there. But tyre-wise, we're still looking pretty tasty on these mediums. They might be able to go a little bit further in the Grand Prix. And I mean, it looks like Sainz is back even on the fuel as well. So that's really, really good to see for him. Leclerc's still a little way under. So I might have to tell him just to be a bit more careful uh, later on. But I cannot believe first overtake for the lead that we were going to do in this career mode there. I mean, Verstappen might come back at me now. As we head down the back straight. You know always how aggressive the Dutchman is. Oh, he tries it. Max Verstappen back up the inside then. So they are going to be side by side of the hill. But no, the Dutchman just gets a bit forced out there. I think Sainz and Perez both get a bit stuck behind him. And that's immediately actually going to give Charles Leclerc a little bit of breathing space. So immediately the gap goes up to one and a half seconds. Now it's worth getting Sainz to push. Can we try and put both Red Bulls behind us early on? I know what I'm doing with the fuel, please. This is intense moments in F1 manager. We are going to tell Sainz just to go for it. Absolutely go for it on Max Verstappen here as we head back down into Wilds the final corner here. Surely, surely Sainz is going to be able to do this now as we head down in through the final turn there. Just wanted to go slow in fast out there. But no, he's going to try and look around the outside on Max Verstappen there. Of course, the Dutchman going to squeeze him out of the final corner. But surely this Ferrari is going to have the legs on the Red Bull there as we head down in towards turn one. I just want to watch the battle, please, at the moment. Why are we watching someone else? Where's Sainz? There's Sainz. There we go. Come on, Carlos. Back down towards the first corner there. He can't do anything against Max Verstappen, so we'll tell him just to sort of sit back uh, once more. And, uh, big lift off. That's frustrating that he can make the move work, um, but, I mean, if he can still apply the pressure to Verstappen and let Charles Leclerc run away at the front of the field, that's not necessarily a bad thing. Well, there we go then, watching Carlos Sainz there. Verstappen really, really struggling down the back straight on lap six there. And Carlos Sainz straight past the Red Bull once again there. So those soft tyres really not working for either of those cars. Have Ferrari made a good strategy call in 2022? It's things you love to see there. The team loving it as well. I'm getting hyped already here. But that is and now a 1-2 in this Grand Prix on harder tyres that we're doing a fantastic job with. This is all shaping up very, very nicely. But again, it is very, very early on in the Grand Prix. I actually want to just get back, there we go, uh, to watching the action. Of course, Sainz still under pressure from Max Verstappen behind. But I don't think the Dutchman, if we have a look at those tyres, they are struggling on those tyres at the moment. But here comes Max as we head back down towards someone there. Look how quick that Red Bull is down the straights there. Nothing Sainz can do as we head back down towards someone there. And Perez again 
might be able to apply pressure as well. But it just seems like there's such an overspeed down the straightaways there, especially for the Red Bulls. But Leclerc may be a little mistake. Their gap has dropped back slightly. But we did get to watch that move at least this time. But it's just back and forth early on here in Bahrain. Go then, riding on board with Carlos Sainz there. Oh, again, you can just see Charles Leclerc really trying to sort of throw uh, Max Verstappen a little bit of a block there. I think Leclerc's still a little way under on fuel. I don't know how Sainz has been so much better on the fuel early on in this race. He's been worse on the ERS, but better on the fuel uh, than Charles Leclerc. So I'm guessing that's just a difference of driving styles there. But yeah, I mean, Leclerc and uh, Sainz working very, very well as a team here. You can tell we're just trying to sort of get under Red Bull's skin. Verstappen not happy uh, with the pace in that Red Bull early on. Are we going to see again Sainz try and make a move back down in towards someone there. Again, look at the speed. Goodbye, Max Verstappen. And back up into P2 once more of the race. But, I, I mean, this is just not a done deal yet. It's going to keep going on this battle. But Sainz, I'm loving this. And, again, he's giving Charles Leclerc just that little bit of breathing room to just comfortably control the pace at the front. As we try... I was going to say that. I got a little bit worried for one second. Uh, but, yeah, we've just got to try and save some fuel on um, Charles Leclerc's car. Just to make sure we're, we're safe for the second half of the afternoon. This is one I'm getting a little bit worried of. Down out of the final corner. Leclerc is now fine on fuel. Um, but Sainz, because of it, has now been able to apply the pressure to his teammate there. Ferrari is going to be side by side. Back down towards someone. This is not quite what we need at the start of the year. As Leclerc, he's not going to lose one. He might lose two places. As Verstappen back up the inside that he goes. Down through turn one there. Leclerc is going to try and not give up on it. But he has had to admit defeat there. And down to P3. And will Verstappen get the run on both of them? As we head up the hill there. Max Verstappen side by side with Carlos Sainz. And it's just all kicking off at the start of this year there. Max Verstappen back up into the lead of the Grand Prix there. Sainz now P2. Leclerc P3. It's all kicking off. And the Dutchman though back in front where he wants to be. Sainz not happy with that one as well. You know they really shouldn't have tripped over each other in that instance. But it's just so so difficult early on. And very very interesting to try and manage here. Because this is a proper four way scrap for the lead. In the first ever race of F1 Manager. I am loving this. Just giving both drivers the message to go full deploy again. As we're about to start that 10 of the Bahrain Grand Prix here. And are we going to see Leclerc try and get the run there? Oh, Verstappen moving very, very late in the slipstream there. But you can see almost three wide as they head back down towards someone. Sainz goes one way. Leclerc, is he going to go the other on Max Verstappen there? As we get back down towards someone, they're so close to contact between Leclerc and the Dutchman there. But again, Leclerc swoops back up in a P2 of the race there. We'll get them both just to try and go back down to neutral uh, once more. But we need to stop them battling each other. Do I let... I'm oh, going to have to let Sainz go for a little while there. He's got plenty of spare fuel in the car as well. Sainz is going to have to go for it for a couple of laps just to try and break away from Charles Leclerc here. But they're both now quite comfortable on the fuel. But we've got to we've got to let Sainz push. We can't have the drivers uh, just constantly, you know, battling each other there. We're going to try and let Sainz get a couple of seconds up the road and then sort of see how both the drivers' pace fares. I'm intrigued to see, actually... Uh, when both Red Bulls are going to pit there. 50 and 6, or 6, 59, 60% there on the tyres. Perez seems to have burnt through his rubber slightly more than anyone else so far this afternoon, and he's not been the one battling early on in this race there. But here comes Leclerc again around the outside of Carlos Sainz. He might just get shown the door on the exit of the corner there. Hold up Max Verstappen ever so slightly as well. Can we bring in some team orders here just to sort of let him know, just to sit back away from his teammate? I don't think we can. Uh, but we could, boy, could we desperately need to do it there. As Verstappen again applying the pressure. I don't think we've ever seen a Grand Prix as hectic as this early on ever before on an F1 game of any type. But now Sainz just starting to build up a bit of a gap. This is what we need. I'm just going to try and hope Leclerc can settle down and hang on for the moment. As again, here comes Verstappen back down towards turn one. I think this one's basically a given. I say that. Verstappen actually not getting close enough in towards the first corner there. So Leclerc will hang on. And now we might just be able to let him push as well. There is Sainz now. Immediately, that two-second gap opens up. So we've got yellow flags in Sector 3. Someone's got issues. Is that an Aston Martin going slowly? No, it all seems to be sorted. I mean, Max Verstappen and Charles Leclerc still going absolutely at it at this stage of the Grand Prix. There, we can see lap 16 now. Surely it's not going to be long before those Red Bull cars are into the pit lane. But, I mean, even from there, they could probably go hard tyres 
uh, to the end of the Grand Prix. It just means they'll have to really try and stretch them out uh, later on in the race. But Leclerc is just about keeping Verstappen at bay at the moment. As soon as I say that, the Dutchman, and again trying to look up the inside at the top of the hill. They're very, very close to contact as neither of them are willing to give an inch. But I think Leclerc just able once more to put the power down on the exit of the corner. Um, but yeah, really, really fantastic racing at the moment. Sainz just having a couple of small lockups up the road there. It's costing him tyre wear a little bit more, but I think everyone's starting to make a few more mistakes. The real question at the moment is when are those Red Bulls going to box? Right, so there we go then. End of lap 19. We are seeing a few cars into the pits. They're Bottas, Alonso and Mick Schumacher, the first cars to make the call in this Grand Prix. As they're all trying to go hard then, so perhaps they are trying to see themselves through uh, two at the chequered flag. Leclerc just moaning a little bit about tired temperatures here. So are we going to see the Red Bulls, or at least one of them, into the box at the end of this lap? We've still certainly got a few more laps to go on this set of tyres there. And it might mean we can obviously just push a bit harder on those hards later on in the day. Or even just try and push a bit harder on these mediums for now. In fact, I think that's what I'm going to try and get Sainz to do uh, just for a few laps. Just so we can try and keep the gap at the front of the field. Um, but, I mean, yeah, you can't really push on the fuel or on the battery at the moment. But if you just want to take a little bit of extra tyre life out, that's absolutely fine there. So, are we going to see Perez into the pit lane then at the end of that? Uh, no, Sergio Perez is still staying out there, but he is certainly dropping back a bit. Now, normally, the tyre-saving king has definitely... Oh, <coughs> excuse me, sorry. Has definitely had to try and save his rubber so far in this Grand Prix. We've got yellow flags out again in Sector 3. Someone spun out. Not too sure who that was. And apparently we're not going to get a look at it either at the moment. There we go. Ocon with a spin down and towards the final corner. Is it contact or is it just by himself? Oh, it is by himself there. Ocon. Very, very strange there on the exit of the corner trying to put the throttle down. Uh, but that's going to push Ocon down the order at a really critical stage of the race. Oh, there we go. Lap 21. Verstappen into the pit lane then. So the first of the Red Bulls into the box. That's really, really important. Our pit window's just open. But we have can certainly extend this stint a whole lot longer in this Grand Prix. But that is critical then. So looks like the AI are able to go a lot harder on the tyres or a lot longer uh, than our team was originally predicting there. Both Red Bulls in, both Mercedes in as well. So double stops going on down at Red Bull and Mercedes. That's very, very weird to do in this Grand Prix. I mean, Perez was a few seconds uh, behind Max Verstappen, but still not ideal. Um, but yeah, we're just going to let Sainz try and burn out these tyres a bit more. Uh, we're probably going to box him in when he gets down to about 30%. As yeah, everyone else though into the pit service. For Stappen on mediums, are they going to try medium, soft medium this race? Is it worth us trying to go on to softs on Leclerc if we can keep him to look after the tyres later on? He would be very, very fast towards the end of the race, but it is a very aggressive strategy. So at the moment then, yeah, just fast forwarding on then, waiting to see how things pan out. Looks like Verstappen, the gap is coming down ever so slightly, um, but we are going to ignore the option to call at the moment. I think it might be worth uh, trying to take these tyres to sort of about lap 35, 36, and then we might be able to go on softs to the end. Um, but yeah, we're not going to box either driver just yet. The team really want us to. Um, but when we're going to try to avoid it. More options. We're actually going to tell him... Uh, no, we don't want him to retire the car. The team want me to box. We're going to have to box signs. It won't let me get around it. Um, Let's talk time. We're going to have to go hards, aren't we, of course, at this stage of the day. But that's a bit frustrating, the fact it won't let me just go no. Um, unless I can tell him to abort the stop? Apparently not. Um, pit options. We, we can't cancel it, can we? Oh, there we go. Cancel pit stop. There we go. We've we've tricked the game successfully there. But yeah, I guess the next few laps is just going to be monitoring uh, how much Verstappen takes out of us and then hoping we can be quick towards the checkered flag. Uh, so Sainz is moaning about the tyres then. So I'm going to make a very, very late call uh, for Sainz to jump into the pit lane then. He's definitely got issues on those tyres. So I'm going to tell him to... Bo oh, no, he can't box this lap. He's going to have to box next time round. Um, but yeah, not quite the strategy I want us to go for at this stage. Like I said, unless those Red Bulls are going to be two stopping still. But Sainz will tell him to pit then at the end of next lap. Leclerc might be able to go a little bit longer on his set of tyres there. So let's ride on board uh, with Carlos Sainz. Can see oh, a lot of grading on that front left tyre there. But 30 laps to go. It's been a valiant effort by the Spaniard. I am just intrigued to see where he's going to re-emerge in comparison to Max. Not happy either here. We have tried to push these tyres 
quite hard in this race there. But Leclerc is just going to have to stay out one extra lap here as we're going to try and watch the pit stops unfold for Carlos Sainz there. Verstappen 22 seconds back, so it is going to be close on pit exit. But I think the Dutchman might just have the jump on us at the moment. But we already proved in the first stint, you know, you can go quite... Um, you can sort of keep up on a harder set of tyres here. As into the pits comes Carlos Sainz then for the first time on F1 Manager. And that's a nice, clean, tidy stop by Ferrari there. Two and a half seconds. We'll tell Leclerc uh, to box in as well at the end of next lap. Um, so, yeah, there we go. Leclerc will come in as well. Um, but good stop by uh, Carlos Sainz. So, I think he's actually going to be out ahead of Verstappen in this Grand Prix. So, that is really critical then. Sainz still in the lead of this Grand Prix there. And he can definitely just be a bit more aggressive on those tyres. Uh, we'll put him up to four out of five bars there of aggression. Okay. But Leclerc, of course, he's going to box in at the end of this lap as well. You see, yeah, again, that tyre really, really struggling at the moment. We're right on board with Charles Leclerc. I mean, it's still got 28% life on it. Uh, so it's not completely destroyed as of now. But he certainly yeah, is not feeling happy on those tyres. As we get towards the halfway stage of the Bahrain Grand Prix, it's been very, very exciting up to this point. But I guess the real question is... Are Red Bull 1 or 2 stopping here? As you can see, Leclerc really struggling. He's still losing a bit of time uh, to Sainz behind him. He's, he's going to re-emerge in P3 either way. Unless there's somehow the team's like a 1.6 second stop. Or something absolutely mad like that. But out down towards the final corner then. Here comes Charles Leclerc back to box in the Bahrain Grand Prix there. Again, it's been a brilliant team effort so far early on here to not only keep the Red Bulls at bay but also made sure that Sainz was still out ahead of them by the time he did exit out of the pit lane there and he's already broken free of the DRS there but Charles into the pit lane uh, Marcus just confirming that one with him there as here comes the second Ferrari pit stop in two laps hopefully they get this one done nice and tidily like I said Leclerc he will re-emerge in P3 in this Grand Prix but I think we can certainly apply pressure uh, to Max Verstappen there 2.6 second stop for him is not bad going for one second there is let's see where Verstappen is as we head out of the pit lane it is going to be quite close as we head down towards someone one there but yeah Leclerc will get jumped uh, by Max Verstappen but again we're gonna have a lot more tire grip towards the end of this race this is far from over look at this just one lap later already Leclerc applying the pressure to Max Verstappen I'm gonna let him just use a little bit of battery at the moment, try and go super aggressive on this lap. I'll have the DRS as we head up the hill there. And surely this one is a done deal already there. Max Verstappen and Red Bull have got nothing against the superior tyre strategy that Ferrari have unleashed this weekend. And Charles Leclerc will move back up into P2 then of the Grand Prix. I guess the real difficulty now will be can he hold on to it. Obviously now Verstappen will have the DRS for the next couple of laps there. They've been chopping and changing places all afternoon. But we see the move. As it happens there, Ferrari back 1-2 in the first race of F1 Manager. I love this. There we go, Leclerc new fastest lap of the Grand Prix. As I'm just going to tell him to push away from Verstappen slightly. Now he's broken out of the one second window here. But 22 laps to go in Bahrain. It is looking perfect at the moment. But the only issue, the only worry I have at this stage of the day is what happens if Leclerc starts closing in on sights towards the end here. Do I tell him to set a whole position? Or do we let the Golden Boy try and get the first win of the year on the board? Well, in towards the final 15 laps then of this race. We're starting to see a few cars in for their second stop of the afternoon. Magnussen and Lando Norris, they're both going quite aggressive on their strategies. But it doesn't look like it's really going to pay dividends for either of them at the moment. Sainz is pushing his tyres slightly harder than Charles Leclerc. The gap down to 1.6 seconds now. It is coming down. If Leclerc gets within that one second zone... Things might get a little bit uncomfortable towards the end of the race there. I think they're both going to have to try and save a little bit of fuel. But at the moment, Red Bull just can't do anything against us. They are, they should make it to the end on those sets of tyres. But it isn't going to be particularly fun for them. As I think that is Daniel Ricciardo getting lapped now in this Grand Prix. They're a horrible start to the year for McLaren. But yeah, we have really got to try and monitor this gap. Leclerc, I'm sure, will want this victory after taking pole position yesterday. But... We had to let Sainz break free early on in the afternoon just to make sure that he, you know, that they stop tripping over each other when battling the Red Bulls. It's not an easy call to make as a team manager, but it's one we absolutely had to in that moment as we'll get them both just to conserve fuel slightly, just push them back into the green. Oh, there we go. There we go then. So lap 45, 
We are going to see a lot more cars into the pit lane then. So Max Verstappen now 30 seconds away. Surely in 12 laps he's not going to be able to close up that sort of time on us. But it could still get a little bit close uh, towards the end here. As I mean we've got both drivers just to conserve a little bit of fuel over the last couple of laps. Uh, just make sure they're back up into the green comfortable uh, for the end of the race here. But Leclerc is still taking you know, a tenth or two out of sight every lap. And if he's taking a tenth out of him every lap, there's going to be about two tenths between them by the chequered flag here. This is shaping up to be a Ferrari jewel in the desert that I'm not sure I want at the moment. His first race as a team principal, he got both your cars one and two. What, what do you do here? This is so difficult as we head in towards the final dying stages of what has been a brilliant season opener in Bahrain. Well, there we go, a small lockup I think from Carlos Sainz at the top of the hill means Charles Leclerc is now right in the wheel tracks of his teammate and I, I think I'm just going to have to let him race. First race of the year, you know, it's a clean slate for Ferrari. Clearly we've got a car with a lot of pace there but we can't let them cost each other too much time uh, with Max Verstappen closing in further back there but is Charles Leclerc he is going to get the run on Carlos Sainz as we head back down in towards turn one here we might just have to watch how this unfolds in the final 10 laps here I think Sainz just going to slot in behind him for now but will the Spaniard get the DRS on Charles Leclerc as we head up the hill I mean Charles got a little bit more battery to use as well at his disposal if he wants to try and defend from Carlos Sainz there who thinks about it in towards turn four but can't quite make the move happen uh, this time round. I think sensibly you know Leclerc he saved some battery he let Sainz break away earlier on in the afternoon I'm certainly going to give him a chance to try and do the same here if you know because he's got that extra battery in the pocket as well you know we've we've got to give him fair shots at the start of this campaign and like I said you know we got Leclerc to defend Verstappen for a few laps let Sainz build up a gap earlier on it's clear at the moment Charles Leclerc has got some fantastic pace in the car as we've just set him to defend from Sainz behind there just makes sure that he's using the DRS on the right points of the lap but yeah if he can break away from Sainz he's got slightly more tyre wear as well I think to be fair the moment things are pointing towards Leclerc just being a bit more comfortable towards the end of the afternoon of course the last thing we want is these two battling and then Verstappen being given a lot of free time to close in the gap but Sainz still right there he's not going to make this any easier for Verstappen oh, sorry for Charles Leclerc than he absolutely has to there but we're just going to try and hopefully see Leclerc pull away ever so slightly as we head down towards the final corner. It always amazes me uh, just how quickly the AI burned through their battery on F1 Manager here. But Sainz, he's going to come back at him anyway as we head down towards Selm 1 there. Is he going to be able to get the run there? I don't think he's quite got enough top end speed in the car and Leclerc will once more hang on as we get back down in towards Turn 1. Like I said, he's got a bit more tyre life to try and use up there just by going that little bit longer. Uh, but yeah, Sainz trying to make overtakes happen and I think we're just going to have to tell him to watch out, stay back a little bit. We don't want any drama towards the end of the final race. Uh, sorry, the, f the first race even. We're not quite at Abu Dhabi just yet. First race of the year, we just need him to just sit back let Leclerc have some breathing space. He's got, like I said, better tyre wear, slightly more fuel still. In fact, they're pretty even now on the fuel side of things. But it's it's not an easy call to make. But Charles Leclerc, I think, yeah, he's done everything he needs to do today. I think he certainly deserves this win, especially after that bre breathtaking pole lap that we watched yesterday. Oh, there we go. Charles Leclerc again. A sm oh, sorry, Carlos Sainz even again. Just a small lock up there has really, really cost him. And that's going to push him a couple of seconds away from Charles Leclerc late on in the day. I mean, they're both just sort of sat. I'm going to make sure they're just both on standard usage uh, to the chequered flag here. But five laps to go in Bahrain. This has worked out so perfectly for us to kickstart the year. Ferrari are well and truly back unless the engines suddenly, suddenly now blow up. Well, about to start the final lap then of the Bahrain Grand Prix here. And Charles Leclerc, that's how fast he's been. Despite Max Verstappen being on a set of soft compound tyres, Leclerc has still gone fastest again in this Grand Prix. But last lap then for Charles Leclerc to kickstart Ferrari's campaign in a similar fashion to what they managed in real life 2022 there was under pressure from Verstappen early on in the Grand Prix. But slightly superior strategy is going to mean unless something goes catastrophically wrong on the final lap here in at Bar Remy. I'm going to be very, very tight on fuel to at the checkered flag. I think I'm just going to make sure he conserves it. Both of them conserve a uh, two at the end. But a 1-2 in our first race on F1 Manager. Like I said, I know some of you guys want a road to glory career mode. We will certainly be doing one of those down the line. But whilst we learn the ropes on this game, you know, there's so much to learn 
on F1 Manager. I'd rather just sort of do one season where we get used to things, work at everything we need to, and then really try and smash that sort of thing out of the park in just a few weeks' time here. But down in towards turn 10 for the final time here. Charles Leclerc, he's done a fantastic job here in Sakia to kickstart Ferrari's return. It'll be their first win since the 2019 Singapore Grand Prix. Of course, that was Sebastian Vettel later on in that campaign there, of course, with the spicy engine, I think we'll call it. But there's no such issues or worries at the moment. Ferrari, they've come back after a difficult couple of years. Of course, 2020 was an absolute disaster. 2021 was the rebuild, the refocus, the reshuffle at the top there. Charles Leclerc is going to lead the way. A 1-2 here for the first race of the year in F1 Manager 22. Round in the final corner. Let's ride on board with Charles Leclerc. Hopefully we'll see some fireworks as well. But what a way to kickstart our campaign at the top of Ferrari. It's the win. And check it flag. But this was incredibly difficult. Here's the replay. Charles Leclerc there taking home the win. There'll be celebrations tonight after a performance like that. They've done themselves and the team proud. There we go then, just a few words of encouragement from the team there. Max Verstappen will come through in P3 at the checkered flag there. Sergio Perez really did struggle for race pace in the end in P4 there. Hamilton, a good recovery to fifth place there. George Russell did get the jump on Bottas to finish sixth. And then, yeah, Bottas seventh there, fantastic race for him and his new team at Alfa Romeo there. Gasly, Alonso and Kevin Magnussen will score that final points paying position there. So the two stop really did work uh, for K-Mag in the end. But what a race. Well, this was definitely Charles Leclerc's weekend. Everyone involved in Formula One dreams of seeing their driver up there on the podium. And the Monegasque driver certainly proved his worth with a terrific drive today. Alongside them, of course, the other two talented drivers completing today's podium lineup. I don't think Ferrari will be too disappointed with that result. Yep, they managed to bring everything together. Strategy, engineering and driving. They've had a very strong weekend indeed. After an intense weekend, the team ends in first place in the constructor standings. The teams now look ahead to the next round, where they'll duel it out in the sand dunes of Saudi Arabia. Well, there we are then. The end of the Bahrain Grand Prix. And what a race that was there. Charles Leclerc, ball position, fastest lap. Race victory, 26 points on the board. I feel like I said that a lot on F122, but it feels even better uh, when we've been the one to lead the team home there. Carlos Sainz P2, they're a much superior strategy. They're the only two drivers on a one-stop today. Really did work out rather nicely for us and a good way to sort of learn the ropes on F1 Manager there. Max Verstappen, I'm sure, gutted uh, to already walk away with P3 there ahead of Perez. And like we said, Hamilton there. Russell got the jump on Valtteri Bottas. Kevin Magnussen at one place. Is Lando Norris uh, the big mover there up to? And Zhou Guan Yu in his debut, only able to finish down in P13. But that means, of course, Drivers' Championship exactly as the same as the race results there. Constructors-wise, though, look at that. 44 points for Ferrari at the top of the table there. Red Bull, Mercedes, second and third. Alfa Romeo in fourth, ahead of Alfa Tauri and Alpine there. Seven teams getting points on the board after the first race weekend, but surely it will only be a matter of when uh, rather than if McLaren will join the rostrum. Aston Martin and Williams a little bit further away, but I'm sure we'll see some good results from them later on in the year.
year. But thank you all so much for watching this first video on F1 Manager. We're going to try and bring out a second one later on this evening for you guys as well. So, you know, if you're new around here and you have enjoyed, please do make sure to leave a like and get yourself subscribed. But yeah, that's going to do us then here from Bahrain. And we will return, like Karun Chandok said, ready from Saudi Arabia. None of these videos would be possible without the help of our channel members. So a massive thank you to all of the names you see on your screens currently for helping support the channel. You can join them by clicking the join button down below. And yeah, thank you once again to everyone that continues all the insane support on my work.